Hello to Walletin. It is time for another edition of Kitchen Science, where we get to combine two of my favorite things, my kitchen and science. <laughs> Today, we are going to make a tornado. Yes, indeed. Not the kind of terrible tornado that goes ripping through towns and tears off roofs and stuff, but a tornado that we will capture in a jar. Pretty cool. Let's see what we need. All right, you might be surprised, but with just a three items, you can create your very own tornado. All you need, this is the hardest one, and it's not even very hard, is to find a jar, an empty clean jar, and it has to have a nice sealing locking lid. So an old olive jar, an old pickle jar, um, a mason jar, any of those will work. Little bit of dish soap, just a little bit. Not gonna waste a lot in this experiment. And a big pile of water. That's all you need to make a tornado. It's really cool. Now, you can make this even cooler by adding a few extra elements. So if you happen to have some of this stuff around, go grab it. If you happen to have glitter, doesn't matter what color, but a little bit of glitter. If you happen to have some hand sanitizer, I bet everybody has some of that. <laughs> you can use that in one thing I'm gonna show you. And if you happen to have some little pony beads, or I don't have pony beads, but we're big Lego fans in this house, so I just grabbed some tiny, tiny Legos. Um, those will work for one part of the experiment we're gonna do. And last but not least, uh, a little bit of food coloring. Um, and you'll see, we're gonna make our tornado look a lot of different ways. So we'll start with the simplest version, and then we'll advance up to slightly more creative and awesome versions. All right, let's bring it on. All right, let's do this thing. Get your jar. This is so simple, it's great. Fill your jar up with water. <laughs> now, I say fill your jar up, I don't really mean it. Um, you're gonna fill your jar most of the way up. Like, you know, leave about an inch at the top. In this particular olive jar, I'll stop filling it up when it gets about to the neck of the jar. Um, but this isn't a situation that requires a ton of precision, so just leave yourself a little space at the top and you're good. Okay, so you got your water filled up. Then you're gonna grab your dish soap and you're gonna put a little squirt. You don't want too much in there because if you get too much soap in there, the reaction will be more difficult to see. So you just wanna put like, I, yeah, I'd hold this up if I could, but a few drops, just the tiniest. So I got my soap in there. I've got my water in there. I've got my lid on there really well. Make sure your lid's on there really well, trust me. <laughs> and then I'm gonna make a reaction. Are you ready? Look at that. <laughs> Your very own tornado in a jar. <laughs> All right, let's step it up a notch and grab our glitter and add that to our bottle. So we'll in stages um, change the elements of this demonstration. And I encourage you to try out a variety of different things because I have, I spent the better part of yesterday <laughs> <laughs> playing around with various ways to make my tornado. And so I've got my glitter in there. I gotta say with the glitter, um, glitter can clump. So a very good suggestion is to just, you know, shake it up a little. Now after you've kind of broken up the clumps, you're gonna wanna let things settle just a little bit. But see there, I've got what looks kind of like a snow globe or something. I'm gonna let it settle down for just a second. And let's talk about some science. All right, it's time for some science. It's time for some science. It's time for some science today. <laughs> okay, today's science is all about force. Now, in physics, force is a very important property. And what it means is the push or the pull of an object resulting from the object interacting with other objects. So what we're doing here with our tornado in a bottle is causing centripetal force, which is a specific kind of force. It's an inward facing force. And by shaking like this, it won't work if you shake like this. You've got to shake in a circular manner. You're creating centripetal force, which is pulling objects or liquids in this case, 
toward its circular path. So the twister created in your bottle is caused by this inward facing force. Pretty cool. All right, let's check in on our glitter twister. Okay, here we are. You can see there's some glitter at the top and some glitter at the bottom, but it's all pretty much settled down. So let's try mixing it up again. Again, you want to mix it in a circular fashion because that's how you're creating that centripetal force. So get it nice and mixed up. And let's see if we can see our glitter pulling up in that little vortex there. All right, yeah, you can kind of see it. Let's try it again. Sometimes you can do more than once. Sometimes you gotta let it settle in between, but you'll see when you play around with this that there is just infinite amounts of fun here. You can kind of see, see, you see the glitter at the bottom getting sucked up into the vortex. Pretty cool, right? You can imagine it gets even cooler. Okay, that's not where we're gonna stop though. We got more things to play with. All right, we've tried a glitter twister. Let's try a Lego twister. <laughs> I got my jar filled back up with clean water. I'm gonna dump in my little tiny bowl of colorful Lego. They're all floating there on the top right now. We're gonna put in just a little squeeze of dish soap. Again, you do not need much dish soap to make this effect happen. Seal up, swish it around a little bit to get that soap mixed up in there. We're gonna let it settle for a second, and then we're gonna see if we can get the Lego to actually get sucked up into the twister. So the cool thing here is that you can, if you put objects in there, sometimes get them to be sucked into a twister just like they're a car or a mobile home or the roof of your house. <laughs> Let's hope none of those things ever happen to you. I'm from Iowa, so I've been through a few tornadoes myself, but <laughs> it's not fun. Okay, there's our Lego. Let's see what happens. Again, twist, spin, stir in a circular fashion to create that centripetal force. And you see your little tornado there. You can see a few things kind of getting sucked up in there. Yeah, now if I was stronger and able to do it with more force, I might be able to see a more significant reaction. Let's see. Really getting the muscles out there. <laughs> you can see there's one that's just stuck up in there. Isn't that fun? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try one more. I've got water and my Lego in the jar. And now, because there's different ways, you don't have to use dish soap. You can also use hand sanitizer as a way to create the reaction. So drop in, not much. Hand sanitizer is pretty valuable these days. <laughs> it's just like the dish soap though, you don't need much. Seal that puppy up, shake it up, you know, get it stirred up a little bit so the hand sanitizer is incorporated into the rest of the water. Let it settle down a little bit. Let's see if the hand sanitizer creates a better reaction or a less distinct reaction than the dish soap. Are you ready? Whoa. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah, the hand sanitizer is pretty cool. You can definitely clearly see the reaction with that. Now, one other thing, I said that was the last one, but I was wrong. One other thing that I kind of want to try, does it make a difference if you turn the whole thing upside down, you think? There's a lot of different ways you can experiment with this thing. So let's try it upside down. Hmm. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna try that again, because that looked like it was coming out cool. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, try it upside down too, okay. Go forth, find a jar, find some water, find some soap or hand sanitizer, and whatever items you wanna play with, and make yourself your very own twister in a jar. <laughs>